We have already looked at steady state error for a step input for a plant, and we use the final value theorem, which says that the limit as time goes to infinity of some function of time is equal to the limit as s goes to zero of s times the Laplace transform of the function. And then we noted that the Laplace transform of a step function is 1 over s. So often we just got lazy and we were saying that the final value for a function with a step input was just the limit as s goes to 0 of g of s. And you can see that's because the s here is canceled by the step input s here. And we're just left with the limit of g of s. This is fine for a plant, but as a control system designer, it's useful to look at what happens to a system in feedback. Let's first look at the transfer function form, and then I'll go back and look at it in a differential equation form. Transfer function form, we have a system that's like this. With unity feedback, we have some controller, a plant, which is expressed as a transfer function, the ratio of two polynomials in S, unity feedback. I'm interested in this value right here. That's the error. That's the difference between what I measured and what I want the input to be. And ideally, of course, in a system, you would want the measured value to be equal to the desired value after all the transients have died out. I now rewrite the transfer function so that the output is E, the error, because that's what I'm interested in. And the system looks like this. The input is X desired. The output is E. Rewriting the transfer function and doing the block diagram algebra, I have the resulting transfer function from X desired to E is equal to D over D plus KN. I want to know what's the steady state error E when X desired is a step input. So I apply the final value theorem and I have the limit as S goes to zero of S. And now the transfer function is going to be one over S times D over D plus KN. S is cancel. Again, this is the step. And I'm left with this limit as S goes to zero of D over D plus KN. Well, I want the steady state error to be zero. The steady state error is the difference between what I'm measuring and what I want the system to be. This will only be zero if the limit as S goes to zero of D is equal to zero. That occurs if D has a pole at zero. So I can say, if a system is in unity feedback, that is, is it in, if it is in this form, and this part right here has a pole at zero, then the steady state error to a step input will be zero. This type of analysis is common enough that there's names associated with these. And we say if G of S has a pole at zero, it's a type one system. One pole at zero gives type one system. Type one systems have zero steady state error when placed in unity feedback. You can continue with this and say, well, what if I want X desired to be a ramp input? Well, the Laplace transform of a ramp is one over S squared. And now let's go back and apply that to my system and see what E is. Well, one of my S's goes away because it cancels. And I'm still left with the one over S. So if I said S is equal to zero right now, the system may go to infinity. That's not what I want. But if D has two poles at zero, and I can factor this out and I would end up with one over S, S squared. And this is my D prime. This is the D with the poles factored out, D plus KN. One of those would cancel. I'd be left with a zero set S equal to zero, and this would become zero. So I can say this, if G of S has two poles at zero and is placed in a control system with unity feedback, then the steady state error to a ramp input will be zero. If G of S has two poles at zero, it's called a type two system. Let's look at the differential equation form. I've now written this transfer function in a differential equation form. Again, x to the parentheses n is the nth derivative of x. The system right here, the output is x. The input for the system right here is x desired minus x. You can see that's from the feedback, x desired minus x. E is the input to the system. As time goes to infinity, to a step input, all the derivatives go to zero. So what I'm left with is this term and those terms. And you can see that if the plant has a pole at zero, a pole at zero means that this term is zero. If this term is zero and I do a Laplace transform, then I have an S that I can factor out. The S gives me the pole at zero. 
I'm left with these terms going to zero at steady state for a step into it because it's a linear system and the output will follow the form of the input. So that means the output X will eventually become flat or straight, just like a step does. No change, so the derivatives will all be zero. That means I'm left with X D is equal to X zero steady state error. I'm not going to follow through with the math, but you should be able to convince yourself that if I'm looking for a ramp input, if I have two poles at zero, that means that this term and that term will both be zero. When I do the Laplace transform, I'll have an S squared that I can factor out. And when I put the ramp input here, the S from the ramp on this side will cancel out and I'll end up with the same thing. The text takes a slightly different approach. They start with a system like this, just as we did before. The transfer function from U to E can be written like this. And now let's let U equal to a step input of magnitude R, and it will have the Laplace of R over S. And I want to know what's the value of E as time goes to infinity. So we take the limit as S goes to zero of S times the step R over S times the one over one plus G, and that will be error at steady state. R is a constant. The S's cancel, and so I'm left with the limit as S goes to 0 of 1 over 1 plus G. Well, the two ones are constant too, so the book defines KP as the step error constant, which is the limit as S goes to 0 of G of S. So then we can write error steady state for a step is equal to R over 1 plus KP, where KP is defined as the limit as S goes to 0 of G of S. And you can see we have the same results. If G of S has a pole at zero, when we set S is equal to zero, then G of S is going to go to infinity, and we have a one plus infinity constant over one plus infinity, which gives us zero. So we're back to the same thing that we saw before. If G of S has a pole at zero, it's a type one system, and the steady state error to a step input is zero. If you looked at the graph of the transient response, you'd see something like this. R is the magnitude of the step, and the error, the difference between where you want to be and where the system ends up, is R over 1 plus KP. We can do the same thing for a ramp input. For a ramp input, U is equal to R, the magnitude of the slope of the ramp, times 1 over S squared. We follow through with the final value theorem, cross out the S here. We're left with R over S plus S G. I want to take the limit as S goes to zero. This goes to zero. So now I'm left with R over S G. And the book defines K V is equal to the limit as S goes to zero of S G. Therefore, steady state error to a ramp is R over K V. Here's a quick summary. Given a system in unity feedback form here where G of S is whatever is in this part of the feedback system, so it may be the plant and the compensator combined together, the system is type one if G has a pole at zero. It's type two if it has two poles at zero. The steady state error, the error value is right here. It's the difference between the input and the measured output at steady state. When the input is a step function, the steady state error to a step function is zero for a type one system. The steady state error to a ramp input is zero for a type two system. We define the step error constant, Kp, as the limit as s goes to zero of g of s. The ramp error constant, the limit as s goes to zero of s times g of s. Then we have that the steady state error to a step input is r, the magnitude of the step, over one plus Kp and the steady state error to a ramp input is R, the magnitude of the ramp, over KB.